So we're going to talk about uh, the web services component of Elm's Learning Network, uh, as well as how we do section management, things like that. Uh, so part of the way this is set up is a, a very simple, repeatable pattern uh, that allows us to work on a lot of things at scale, for that matter. So uh, for example, simple thing, if I'm in courses.elmsln.local, uh, slash that sing 100. What I'm actually looking at is a uh, tool name uh, slash university, you know, dot edu kind of a thing slash course name, right? That's basically the pattern of what's being formed here. So we can very easily jump to other tools if I would actually type the name the right way. There we go. So online.elmsln.local slash sing100 is the promotional and the front-facing online presence of this course, uh, how we're talking about it to other people. Uh, it's also the, the record that stitches the entire experience together. Uh, so earlier I mentioned there's the, the services button, but we're not going to create a course that way. Uh, so let's see what's in the services tab here. Um, there's a list of all the different web services that are being utilized by this course. Um, not necessarily by the section that's, you know, actively running, um, but are available to this course have been produced. Um, you'll notice here there's this sync service button. And so very simple uh, thing this does is at when it's done building the site, if you can read that at the bottom, uh, it actually transmits the site's uh, cron key back. And so there's kind of this... Um, this two-way street of communications, if you will. So they can either use the uh, the web service users, the service accounts to talk to each other, or um, if it's a more general, like, hey, I, you need to update stuff, uh, we can just issue the cron to run. And you'll see in this case, there's actually a parameter there that says force roster sync, uh, so that can run a, a certain job against cron uh, in a very easy way, right? We don't have to do backend calls and stuff to do that. Uh, so I can click from here and just access the service. You'll see it takes me to where I was, but that's not what we wanted to do. Um, we want to get some sections to show up there. Um, another thing we want to do is uh, we want to produce some other services. Uh, so it's all well and good that we have one, you know, one service, the CIS talking to one service, um, the course outline. Um, but first we're going to set up a section here. Uh, so if we go into offerings, you'll see this is going to start to collect kind of an overtime look at um, this course running. Uh, so we have the option of adding another section here, and so we can manage logistics independently. Uh, we can also add another offering, so that would be you know, an entire semester year combination. Uh, so let's hit edit on this. And uh, uh, for reference, at the way that Arts and Architecture at Penn State has this implemented, a lot of this is automated that I'm showing here. Um, so we've left open room for, you know, making these changes. Um, so let's let's do, you know, let's add a, a sample syllabus, right? So you can imagine you're going through instructional design, IDA, what have you, staff member, faculty, you know, we let them have access to this, whatever. Uh, so I'm uploading my syllabus, my welcome letter for this course. Um, we've got our welcome page area. We want to put um, reference a YouTube video or something. Uh, there we go. And so it would be good if I actually had the iframe source of that, wouldn't it? Uh, I've got it in here somewhere. There we go. iframe. Okay. And so we will hit source mode, put in that iframe. And then maybe I want to actually uh, welcome the students to the course in text as well. All right. So we could, you know, type, put whatever you want here. It's just text area. Um, we can add contact info. So I am BTO Pro or at BTO Pro on triple.org uh, on BTO Pro and pretty much everywhere on BTO Pro. Um, so you'll see there's this access string. This is a way that you can um, basically bind this setup to a primary key that works with an LMS. Uh, we won't get into that, obviously, because uh, we're not hooking this up to an LMS in a Vagrant instance, uh, but it's not that difficult. Uh, so if we go to uh, access duration, uh, this is a part that we have automatically set up at Penn State. But to give an idea of what this does is, let's do, uh, we'll just say July, and the course starts, you know, February 1st of 2014. Uh, now, when we hit save, two things are going to happen here. One, this record is going to get updated. That's cool. 
Uh, two, it's going to look and say, wait a minute, what what uh, services, what remote services uh, was this section using? And so this section is using the, the course outline tool, you know, the courses dot address. And so it knows, oh, there was a change made to me. This may have implications for access. It may have implications for the, the types of uh, pages that are produced and, and things like that in that remote service. So I'm going to ping that remote service using, as we said, this service is, you know, run cron. So it issues a, a non-blocking call. We don't care about that. But it issues a non-blocking call and says, hey, uh, you should probably call home and try to get new data. And so we'll do access service. We click the link to go to SIG 100, and you'll see that now when we go to our welcome page, that information that I entered in that record is now showing up here. Um, you'll see at the bottom, it's you know very faint. We need to work on the interface for this. Um, but we have that random string of the, uh, the primary key that was entered. And um, if we open up our admin tab, you'll see we have section to view. We can actually view everything as a master section uh, or this you know section that came across. Now the master section is it's literally just there so you can do something in the event that you have a course that's not running yet. Uh, it's not really, you know, it's not supposed to be connected to logistics or anything. It's just kind of so people can start doing work uh, prior to a course actually running and, and the logistics being entered for it. Um, we can click on a section list and now we'll see that because of that remote ping that said, hey, you should call home, that it's actually created a record in here. Uh, for this section to be managed on this service. And so it's mapped it to that primary key. Uh, you can mod there are hooks, you can modify this so it can talk to your LMS. That's what we do uh, so that it actually, when it knows a new section is created, it goes and pings our LMS for the roster so that we've got all the students in there automatically. Um, and you'll notice this says active. Um, this is going to use those date ranges. Uh, that I had to set as far as the course being on and off. And then the next day that it's no longer active, it'll deactivate this section. Um, and then there's things you can do during deactivation. Uh, one thing we do is uh, we modify the roles of everyone in the course in that section so that they're no longer students, they're past students. And as a very simple thing, you know, we have, uh, we author or our, our faculty author the content. And so we can legally give the content we can give people access to the content, not the media in the content necessarily. And so just as a blanket policy, uh, if you've taken a course with us before, you can still get to this, this tool and the content in here if you, you know, so choose, but none of the media will be available to you anymore. So it dynamically rewrites it to, to not show it. Um, this is, would be a way you can basically have you know, OER type resources uh, and then if we modify it so that instead of showing nothing, we show a citation, uh, you can start to really open up this stuff and, and deploy your materials while still only authoring it once. So it's you know one other little idea with this. Um, the welcome page we we'll go back to again. You'll see you know hey this message came across from there. Um, there's also the syllabus. And so there's syllabus language. This language is being generated by a record in CIS. You can go and modify it if you want so that you have default language. And then there's the download syllabus link. Um, there's also this really neat thing with, um, with the download button here. If I, if I copy the link address, because I don't want to hit enter on it, and we put it in up here, you'll notice that this is actually pointing to uh, sing 100 slash syllabus slash download. If I hit return, this is going to issue a request to say, oh, uh, look at the section that's currently viewing this link and deliver them the appropriate syllabus. This allows you to effectively program, if you will, the, the linkage to everything. Uh, and so we utilize this little technique so that, you know, for example, it's the syllabus, but we're not pointing to the big old file path that's going to change every semester that then requires logistical changes, requires IDs and IDAs and faculty members to all remember, hey, this file name is used somewhere. Uh, so if I click download, that will deliver me the sample syllabus that I uploaded uh, because I'm part of that section. If you're part of a section three years from now, you will be delivered the syllabus that you know, is directly related to you at that time. Or if there's no syllabus, you noticed before, just said like, ask your instructor for a syllabus. And click help and get some general, this is the generic 
uh, health information that again can be modified in CIS and then is delivered over via web services. Uh, we also have the instructor contact info. So this page is dynamic then. If you have a different instructor for a different section, uh, their info is going to be appended to the front of this generic help language. So we can start to mash some of this stuff up through web service calls. Uh, if we go to the resources page, you'll see we have a generic resources language here. Uh, but let's say we want to actually add a resource so that we get more stuff on here. Um, what we can do, we can go back to the online site and we're going to go to CIS and then we're going to go to resources and you'll see that's this is where all of that language lives. So even down to the footer so that we have a consistent footer that's communicated across all of our courses just saying, hey, the copyright is the date that we started making them till whenever copyright, you know, University XYZ. You can always override it, but it's good to have a, a starting point that's uh, consistent. Um, we also have there's the help language. So if you wanted to modify this help language, you could modify it here and it would propagate across everywhere else. Um, but let's create a new resource. So we can go into here and do course resource. And we're going to create a different kind of resource. Those are called system resources. We're going to make a global one. Um, Hey, let's show up here. And this is called Hey. So the body of content for this is nothing special. We'll just put in um, a link to a YouTube video and you should watch this. It probably won't render it in any way. We're just trying to in illustrate that this is possible in any way. So we're going to save this resource. And so now we've created a resource that can be utilized across uh, our portfolio of courses. Maybe instead of this, it's, um, you know, let's use something that's a little more logical. Let's, may, let's say maybe we're communicating about how Yammer works. Uh, Yammer is a social networking tool. And so maybe we've got a video and then we say, uh, hey, everyone, Yammer is cool and you should use it here are directions, right? You've got some fodder language that's illustrating to students that might be new to the university, might be, you know, maybe you've never heard of Yammer, uh, what Yammer is and how it works. So imagine we've got that there. Uh, now let's go back into our course. So we're going to go to courses, Singularity 100, and we're going to go to offerings. We're going to hit edit on offerings. And you'll see in here, we've got two groups. We've got services in use, which is going to be utilized down the road. Uh, that also tells this system, hey, you should ping this for updates. But there's resources. So let's click Yammer now that that's an available resource in this list. And maybe my contact info is wrong as well. And I don't want to publicize that part. And this has an extra space in it. We're just going to put a non-breaking space. And so let's save this. And what happens is, again, it's pinged it and said, Hey, go update. Uh, something else we're going to do is we're going to kick off other services to be produced here real quick. So we're going to say, go make these other tool sets. And this will keep jobs on the server. You don't have to go through that list of, you know, that, that long form. You don't have to go through uh, that, that setup. These jobs will run in the background while you go and do other things. And so I kicked off three of these right now. Uh, so let's go into courses. Go back to the course and see the changes that I made. Propagate across. And so we can go into help and you'll see that my additional contact information has been removed. We can go into resources and now we should see that it's taken our generic resource language and it's appended the Yammer resource because this section is saying I use this resource. Um, some additional things you can do with the section, right? So some of that stuff lives there. That's generic language. It can be accessed by anything uh, across the network of of, uh, of this course. Uh, but let's edit this and let's look at what the edit form is. So we've got the fact that this is active, you won't be able to set that, you know, unset that basically. You can in certain situations, but um, there's instructional outline that's used. So instead of this, you know, generic unit outline that really doesn't do much in terms of how it's named, let's go and change the name of that to something that might make a little more sense to people. So we're going to say that this is a unit outline. This is a fall offering, or this is a Gene's offering of the course, Gene 2014 offering, right? So maybe we made a new revision of the course 
there. Or maybe this is the first time we made the course and we just want to kind of um, stamp it in time and say, hey, this was what this was at this time. So we can go, and you'll also notice, I, I didn't point this out, um, if a page is empty, it will give a message saying, you know, we're not going to send students to blank pages effectively. So it'll just take them to the next one. Uh, we can go in here, and we're going to say, okay, we're doing a new course revision. So we're going to copy this book, and we're going to name it um, Experimental Fall 2015. Maybe this is something we're working on, we're shooting for next year. This is going to take that entire outline and it works pretty fast. Uh, take the entire outline, copy all of the nodes that were used to produce it, if you care about it from a Drupal perspective, and now you've got an exact replica to work against that you can keep going forward. Uh, you basically forked it at that point. And so you'll see we've got, hey, there's this, this is the new title. That's that one page title that I updated previously. Uh, so now I've got two content outlines in this one space. I've got the one that students currently taking the course can see, and I've got one that I can work on uh, going forward. So we can go into section lists, and the way we could you know, work on these two independently is we'll go in here and we'll verify, hey, this is using, you know, the course is running right now. This is using Gene's 2014 offering. But let's go into our master section and click edit. And we can do, let's switch this to the experimental fall 2015 outline. And so now we're going to go and we're going to switch our section as we're viewing this course to master section. And so now we're going to go through the pages as if we are in the master section of this course. And so to see that these actually are, you know, forked, if you will, let's go and we'll edit this one page. Edit here. I'm going to remove all this stuff. All right, so a very blatant edit has been made to this page. Um, let's go back and we're going to switch over to this section. And this section technically will see this content, um, but you notice the outline collapsed, right? If we go into unit one now, lesson one, this is the new title. Hmm. So you can see we basically, um, we're now able to work ahead in the same location. So there's no more of this, you know, uh, rewriting of links and, you know, oh, well, they actually want to use this version. You can actually treat these different sections independent of one another. Um, and then this is also good. You can have kind of more of a legacy content, if you will. So uh, that, you know, if someone from a year ago comes back into the course, they're still getting the same exact experience they got from a content perspective that they had then. So most likely our, uh, our other services have been produced at this point. Um, let's jump back to those. I want to go to online. Uh, we're, we're working on a user interface bar to streamline that part right there. We'll go to services. And uh, before I click any of these, we'll look on the server. We can validate that they have actually run. Oh, uh, Studio is still processing. Uh, but you can see we made a sing100.interact, a sing100.media, and a sing100.studio that's still being worked on. Um, so these are four, you know, and you know, five if you include CIS, uh, very different tool sets. And so we can jump into media and interact, and these are not, these are not finished by any means. Um, the course one is the one that's the furthest along. Uh, for starters, you'll see that I haven't had to log in anywhere as we've gone through this. Uh, this is provided by something called uh, Bakery which is a module that allows for single sign-on communications. And uh, in the Vagrant instance, it automatically configures that. So you don't have to worry about you know, logging into these different sites as you produce them and things. Um, also, you could theoretically generate like a student account to view what students view uh, through this site, call it test or something. And then that would have connection credentials everywhere, so long as you put test in sections and things. So, um, these are, we're starting to get, you know, a little more experimental at this point with these, but part of the idea is that we have a consistent user experience across these, um, these different systems. You'll notice, again, we're sticking with our naming convention. We've got the tool name, in this case, media. We've got the course name on the other end. Uh, for this one, we've got interact dot media, again, with the course name. Um, we're trying to work on standardizing the, the development interface across, so, um, I have to go and turn these features on. I haven't, we haven't fully flushed out this, these two, well, even with Studio, Studio is the next in line, but I haven't flushed out all these distributions yet. Um, but we can turn these, 
these features on is a CIS connector effectively provides a, a generic framework that you can apply to any distribution. Uh, obviously, I've accounted for them, but you can apply to any distribution so you can start to have this web service connections between systems and the look and feel um, be at least semi-standard, right? We, we want people to make their systems look unique uh, in each system location, but we're still able to have like the user interface bar, uh, for example. Uh, so it apparently doesn't like at the moment that I've issued both of these features to run. <laughs> Feature rebuilding is a fairly substantial task. There we go. Um, and so now I've turned on this this feature because again this isn't this tool is not a complete product yet, um, as is you know the media tool is not a complete product either. Um, but now when we refresh these, we've got our sidebar options just like we had in the course space, um, just like you know we have at some level in the CIS space. It's just you know masquerade at the moment. We don't have the full options flushed out. Uh, most likely we'd put CSS or CIS under there. Um, and so we've got these, we're setting up a, a framework, you know, this is a base framework with Elm's Learning Network in which we can more rapidly develop and consistently produce these tool sets. Um, and so we've already got a lot of investment in these. You see, you know, this is an asset management system. Um, haven't talked a ton about it yet. Um, it's got support for captioning and transcription and, you know, video upload and things like that. Um, it, this is the interactive system. So this has you know support for quizzing and um, and polling and different types of quizzing and timelines and things like that. So these are all tools. Uh, Studio is still publishing in the background. Oh, Studio is done. Studio is uh, another tool set um, that's for student interaction and allows students to uh, submit work, get feedback on it, critique. It has rubrics and things. So these are all still actively in development, um, but you can hopefully see the, the ideas coming together here. Um, and so, yeah, there's you know, section, submission, assignment. Um, as Studio set itself up, and this is part of why I wanted to, to open these, these spaces up, um, some of them are even calling home appropriately. I believe i also calls home. That's the, the code name of that. Yeah, so the Interact space actually called home correctly and said, oh, this, uh, this section is currently valid. Hey, let's pull it across. And uh, same with studio. So the studio space has this area. And so you can, I hope, start to see through all this process um, that you can produce a networked course and have a unified experience through single sign-on technology, things like that, um, provide, you know, and, and so that we get out of this just having these tabs everywhere um, that an LMS generally provides. Uh, we've also got support for uh, LTI, which I can't really demonstrate, you know, in in a vagrant instance. Um, you'll have to look for some of the other videos I've shot about about LTI. But we've got LTI to help prime this process so that basically courses get set up automatically um, via the LTI information coming across for us, so that this big old form gets pre-populated from an LTI launch, and then it's more or less a confirm, you know, do you want to make this, which then kicks off the entire thing to run. Um, so thank you for watching this and any of these other videos. Uh, if you have any questions, please get in touch with me on, on Twitter. We're very excited to uh, keep working on this. And uh, the Vagrant instance is being produced in part because the community is, is starting to, uh, to respond. And uh, so we need to be able to support them. So let me know in issue queues or wherever else how we can meet your needs. And let's change the future.